command respect with the way they play. Like to get in your face in terms of the aggression on the server. So nice to see Dr. Malbs as well. Malbs <laughs> MD, man. I've always loved this guy. He, from literally the day he came into the scene, it was just so sick to watch him play. Uh, he's one of those that just has so much personality as well. He's a very fun character. Oh, he is. And he's also a, a phenom on the server, like crazy mechanical aim. And here we go, ladies and gentlemen, our second best of one of the day, another 1-0 bracket matchup. And it's M80 on the T side of Anubis to kick us off. Hello, Phelps. Got the doolies. No way as well sporting a set. It's the classic buy now. Feels like every team's going for it on that CT side. Get the armor, two sets of doolies dropped. Have those hand cannons to play with. Play towards the A site though. Just gonna be running in, but the flashbangs hold them back. And the flashes are good. Vinny though can now get a little bit more in terms of support. The structure's being implemented. Phelps has those doolies. He's gonna rip a death through two. Two heads get splattered. And although Wreck and Depth have posted up a couple of kills in return, the advantage is right down the middle. It's hard to call between these two teams. You can say that all four players are here. Health bars favoring the T's, and Ooh. now they take two heads. And it's that UK element again that stands tall and delivers with depth on his second. And a first round on an 80. See, that's the benefit of having the Brit, Vince. As soon as you get down into those sort of situations, he just says, stay calm and win the round. <laughs> and it all pays off. Never scared, hitting some nice shots with a Glock. That's rough for Imperial, though. Look really clean. The flashes were on point with the setup as well, the way you're playing off each other. Phelps, the Wild West, spam down, going full Jim West, cleans up. And this is the energy you want to see. For the M80 fans out there, them actually recovering from this pistol is going to have huge waves of impact for them. I tell you what as well, by the way, HLTV fantasy pickers of depth are rejoicing at these performances. I believe he was the cheapest player in the entire RMR. Really? Yeah. Ooh. He was like 169 or 170 or something like they that. They don't know, Vince. They haven't seen him at an iSeries final, mate. I tell you that. They lack critical information, Jackie. Played against this man in groups. It was not pretty. I'll tell you that. It was not pretty. The great performance yesterday. Very early days, of course, here on Anubis. Things could still go pear-shaped on the side of M80, especially as Imperial coming through with a force buy. Some scout MP9s and a couple of pistols on top of it. And Phelps on the wrong side of the smoke, but would have heard a couple of footsteps. Slow around into this one, then see if Imperial get aggressive. Give you room to build into the round. Death steps over the mark, loses his fight towards middle. So that gives a bit of a backup now towards the B site. You can bolster the player over from Temple, but they're fully sort of biting on this one. Uh, you've got a float now with decency towards middle. They're going to scrap towards him. Smokes down behind the double doors. Oh, Phelps got tagged. They would have heard that information. Surely down to 25, but they have focusing their attention over on Cavs instead. No one's checking this angle. Phelps going to punish them. Double kill. Oh no, the round has been entirely wrecked and wreck himself not looking great in this position. Galil in his hands with the last sliver of time slipping on by Kronos laughing at him as that one is claimed back by Imperial. And that's worst case scenario. Oh man, not only do you lose to a, a force buy of a real mixed baggage of weaponry, but three Galils now trade hands into the CTs. I thought they would have heard Phelps getting tagged, but I guess they had bigger fish to fry. May have got baited out by the fact it was on the cams instead, but what a turnaround. That is Imperial going to be loving it. And it's the complete flip-flop of obviously the way we sort of built it there, right? Where you think for M80, you're going to be hyped up. You're going to be sort of dialed in immediately thinking, all right, boys, let's ease into this one. We've got a nice pistol round up our sleeve. We can really excel from that. Instead, Imperial put their foot on the gas and now put themselves in a spot where you've got good weaponry to work with. You have those scavenge weapons from the prior rounds. You can build a little bit of money on some of the players and invest where necessary, making sure you have the extra nades that you need to play your CT side efficiently. Bit of a pause coming in here. M80 on $1,400. Wouldn't be surprised if we see a full on investment from them following the footsteps of Depth, who's gone for the Deagle. I used to have a pretty mean Deagle back in the day. I'll tell you that. We'll see if it's still there, if it's still packing. Obviously, the coach of this roster for a while, then substituting himself in off the back of the departure of Manx from the team. 
Overall looking pretty good. Yesterday as well, it was quite cheeky. He caught a couple of the rounds on Ancient. Man whipped out the Zeus, Vince, and he was actually getting some kills with it. Yeah, I'm kind of curious. You know, I was, I was going to mention this earlier on in terms of pistol rounds. I wonder if we're going to get to a stage where some teams will actually prioritize going for a Zeus in some of these maps like Ancient. Oh, yeah. There's, there's a lot of angles, like you're thinking of Cave, you're thinking of A Main and Donut, for example. Uh, Nuke is another map where it really seems to me would be a fairly obvious choice to go for some Zeuses in like Hut or Squeaky. I'm curious if we're going to see that shift over eventually. I think so, right? Because you remember there was that brief period in the meta back when Cobblestone was in play where they you had the kill reward that was pretty damn high for the Zeus. So everyone was buying it to play like drop down, yeah. off angles where you could get one kill with it, make a ton of money and be like, oh, all right, we're, we're back in. Now, of course, with the new changes with the Zeus, it's a whole lot more consistent. Uh, as long as you actually get the tag off, it will kill. There's no opportunity now where you just deal a little bit of damage. So if you learn the distance, there's a lot of positions across the map pool. You can play in a one and done angle, get one kill with it like you say on pistols right drop two sets of julies have that zeus you're going to be cooking yeah I, I mean i've heard some people say like oh it's because the the recharge function was put in i don't really see that myself because i think at the pro level of play you probably don't get a chance to fire it off twice yeah i think it's more as you mentioned the consistency now is a thing if you get hit in the arm you get hit in the leg you're dead it doesn't mm -hmm. matter and the range it fits itself so well to the current map pool as well. You know, if we had like train in the map pool, we had dust two, these big open expansive maps, I don't think this used to be getting as much play. Although, I mean, then again, I'm thinking of train, I'm thinking of pop dog. I mean, that's going to be a, a crazy pop, position. Ivy. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's true. But for like dust two, you're probably not going to get that much out of it other than maybe like long doors or up close in like the, the you know, the, the B side of the, the map. But Anubis, Ancient, Nuke, these are all maps, man, where the Zeus will thrive, surely. Yeah, there's even some cheeky off angles like on Overpass where you can be really annoying inside of Connector. But yeah. like you say, anything that has kind of like a hut style exit, right, where you have to go through one set position and there's an off angle that you can sit there with, basically just watch some of Rob's demos ever since the update that you've seen with the Zeus and you'll get a whole load of them that you can add to your game. Seeing as we've got a bit of a pause here, we were just talking about some of the maps that are no longer in the pool, Jackie. I, I'm, I'm curious, if you had the choice of removing one map and adding one map, which way do you come down on this one? Hang on a minute, Vince. Are they having a dance-off right now? <laughs> is this... Can we go back to CT Spawn, please, Mr. Observer? I'm, I'm very curious if this is some sort of competitive dance-off that we're seeing here. There was a lot of movement, a lot of gyrating, full Shakira-level stuff here from the CT side. I think they finished, Vince. There might have been a winner. There might have been a winner. <laughs> but we'll come back to that. Yeah, I, I think overall, man, in terms of the map pool that we're looking at right now, I know most people hate it, but I love a bit of vertigo. I don't really want to see it go anywhere, to be honest. I think it's fun Counter-Strike. It might not be the most Counter-Strike Counter-Strike, but it is fun Counter-Strike, especially in Pugs. Uh, without buying out Tuscan as well, I feel like it's only a matter of time, right? Till we get Tuscan back, probably have some Valve magic, like reset the map a little bit, update it more to factor in the Molotov, some of the newer things that CSGO brought into the rotation. See, so yeah, I'd like a bit of Tuscan back, but we'll come back to that. We'll see. Maybe next year we'll have the Tuscan RMRs. But for now, we're here on Anubis. 1-1, one, one, game goes live again. They have fully invested behind the lack of money, around fourteen to fifteen hundred dollars across the board, and Wrecker's already taking quite a bit of damage here up on the rugs. Drops down into A main behind the smoke. Vinny on the other side, and Swisher taking the initiative, pushing through mids. Does have death just behind him? And he posted up towards camera. So we're just clearing by double doors, having a little bit of a look around, splashing the water. And that's actually brought a bit of a rotation. Henny heard that. It was combed across. So he's going to back up towards heaven, expecting potentially a play out towards the A site. So mid gets a little bit weaker for Swisher to attempt to execute on. Player on the side of Temple is decent T, and he did throw out a couple of shots, spitting some lead over onto Swisher's side. It's forced him back onto the drop position. M80 are taking their sweet time on this one. They don't have too much utility, two smokes to execute onto the site with. Maybe just waiting out that A main smoke as it stands. Now it has cleared. Walking their way up towards the lip of A main. The Eagles to play off the back of the pop flash through the window. Vinny, he's got to lay down the law with the Galil and deny the Ecos from finding success. Good for free. Solid aim, Henny may have connected the shot with a scout, but it is against an armored opponent, so Swisher 
requires finishing off. 10 seconds left, and Rec is a goner. So M80's full on force is not going to really yield anything in return, courtesy of Vinny's triple. I used to seeing the Brazilians hyped and amped up. Very calm and collected, composed. Yeah, save it for the rounds that deserve it, right? Yeah, a lot more uh, explosive when necessary. Interesting setup there from Def's chair. Fully reclined, but just using the support of his own back to sit straight. That makes my back hurt just looking at it, to be honest, Jackie. Um, but hey, whatever works for him. He's an innovative guy, you know? He, he doesn't play by the rules. Ooh, decent team. He throws the rule book down middle, and it beheads Malbs. There's a lot of carnage into this one, though. The SMGs wanted to go aggro. They find limited success across the map, and it does at least command two frags onto the side of M80. So two rebuys having to come out here, obviously onto the lower weapon, so it's kind of the game plan for Imperial. Yeah, there's the game plan, but if they lose another player, that's where things start to go a little bit awry. Because now it's just rifles remaining. Two girls and M4. Depp's managed to find his way down silently, not giving his position away, but he's going to be up against Vinny. And a heads up, 44 HP facing 100. It's hard to see how he was ever going to win that trade. And now down to Slacks with just his Glock. Making moves to where his fallen IGL is currently residing. But this round is going to be a 3-1 to Imperial. Rifles will be up on the horizon momentarily. MP9 has been picked up. A kill would have been huge. That didn't quite happen, though. Looked like he was on point. Tried to line it up, but Henny gets the better of him. Early rounds. Out of the way. Obviously, off the back of the flip-flop from the pistol. Delayed the economy a little bit for that T-side. Slowed things down. So now at a scoreline of 1-3, to three, they're able to reinvest. And we'll see really what they're bringing to the table here. What the actual initiative behind M80's T-side is going to be looking like going into round 5. So far, Imperial haven't really had any cause to get too aggressive. It is a component of Anubis on the CT side, which you expect to see quite a bit. They've been sitting back and absorbing the pressure. Molotov down from Vinny, gets up close, playing A alone again. And they are taking a little bit of mid control now. Decent T here with his A1S. Well-timed Molotov as well, as Phelps and No Way will hold angles on the B side of the map. They've done a good job of keeping M80 at arm's reach right now. Like, a lot of expended utility on both sides, but not really anything to show for it if you're the T's. Hot flash through the double doors, blind, but the Daredevil himself in depth connects. Headshot. That was indecent. That was perfect. That's got to be a tilt, Jackie. You know you just landed a perfect pop flash and you still get railed in the head instantly. Now, Mal's playing on the periphery of the Molotov, but Phelps does his due diligence, checking the angle. And D Thorn's dark, allowing them to take position themselves. So the early map control you took towards middle that would have allowed you to wrap back, drop down, and fight through dark towards the B site has now been restricted. Henny as well finds another pick onto depth on the late push towards mid, and Swisher and Slacks, they've been waiting this whole time to fight out through B main when the time is right, but it's looking rough for them. Swisher, good for one onto Phelps, but the trade game goes the way of Imperial. Very heads up, you fight back for control of dark and piece it together. That was effectively their bonus round as well, Jackie. And they come out with three players, an AWP, two Premier Rifles, a 4-1 lead. And this is off the back of Depth getting a, a crazy kill through the flashbang. But past that point, it was all Imperial. And comfortably so. And we're seeing Phelps. Like, we haven't really touched on Phelps that much. This is a guy, for the longest time, the Brazilian scene has been touted as, like, this crazy individual player. Showing us why right now. A champion of the game. Legend of the Sea. Already into this round. Shows some of what he can do. Lighting up the map with a hot rod. All the players towards stairs. Bloodied, broken, and bruised in terms of the initial damage. Missed shot on the AWP, allowing them to bypass round towards A, but Vinny's got that covered. And they've got this round covered as well. Swisher remains stuck behind the smoke. Slacks yet to get off the mark. Just the one kill for Malbs. Collectively, 12 kills for M80. Phelps pretty much has them covered by himself. 
and this has been dominant. And you're getting to a stage now for M80 where the alarm bells begin to ring. Like the T-side of Anubis, probably the most T-sided map in the pool. And you're starting off this rough. And you know the Imperial are going to be loving life on the flip side when they're on the T-side. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you got to find a way back into the game right here, right now. you got the pistol round, but that's it. Needs to support it with some extra. Slack's donning the orb. This is the weapon that he made a name for himself with, of course. Yet to really get himself onto the board. Should be able to change fate here, but doesn't need it down towards dark. It'll be Malbs that finds the head. Vinny trades back and the Orpa already taken out of the game. Decency! He thought he was in a good position, but peekaboo from death. And he returns the favor. Labored spray on both sides of Swisher. And no way, trading blows. Haymakers connect on both. Both staggered. Both out on their feet. No way, still able to try and hold the line. Doing that, Swisher, one HP. A small boy alongside him dies. Right idea from Henny, but just slightly off on the shot. But in this two on two, the HP bar is favoring the CTs, and they have a flank play in effect from Vinny. Now they know he's typically the A player. So two potential positions if he's going to be on the flank is B main and potentially in the dark area. Swisher with seven bullets and one HP. He's going to try and withstand some of this pressure and absorb it for his teammate, but he's not able to get it done in time. And now Rex's position is no, but he still takes the head of Henny. And it's such an important round, such an important clutch for M80 to pick up. Really nice play as well between the duo there. It's Swisher knowing that he's so low, obviously, with the ammunition as well. Couldn't even afford going for the reload in case the audio cue gave him away. Just plays for the bait setup. So Rex back inside of the smoke towards jail, could walk around the back. Overall, brilliant clutch from them. Heads up shot as well, not just about the setup, it's the fact that he actually hits that one to close it down towards the end. And we were saying they need rounds, that's one way to get the game going again. You can save the AWP as well that was cold on the ground. Slack's back in play with the scope, has an opportunity to change fate now. The consistency though, Jackie, it's all well and good to put one foot forward, but you've got to make sure you don't trip and fall, because Imperial will punish you. Your money still far from ideal. Imperial could still crack off two or three rounds in a row. And it's such an explosive team as well, which will take the fight to you. They're not going to allow you to take any pause for breath. Vinny up against the world, and he will die without getting any real damage done in return. A free plant for M80. They're gasping for breath at the site, but they're only getting depth as he finds the entry there. You've got this one in the palm of your hands. You can see with the posture already from the CT side, feeling very uncomfortable with the economy and the risk of going for this one if you do lose these weapons off the back of the round. So a third now on the cards for M80. This is a big response. You said consistency. They needed it. At least bridging the gap by finding two rounds back to back, it's going to make it a lot easier for them to actually have a, a relatively solid T half here if they can keep building from this. And they may have found a little bit of weakness. And I'm not saying that Vinny by himself is weak. I mean, he is playing out of his mind again with 10 frags. But he is playing a site completely alone. That's not necessarily crazy and orthodox plays. But typically, you have a player that is going to be that quick rotation from Temple or Cams that will help out your A player. Imperial not really opting for that. They're deciding to go for more aggression in middle and stacking a lot more players on the B site. It feels like M80 have made a good read here, Jackie. And they're now trying to exploit it. That's what it's about, finding the weakness. You can find that weakened knee, you can target it again and again. Phelps, head and shoulders above the rest in terms of the ADR at the moment. Proving it with his KD as well, 10 to 4 for the man. He's been pretty strong in some of these plays. Vinny with the early utility. Flash out the window in case they're coming for a quick pop in towards carpet sides. And decency again, aggressive towards middle. Smoke is broken and he goes down with it. Disappointed with that outcome, he's just gift wrapped a free kill across and mobs. He may have had a slow start, but he is going to punish you. Eventually, he will find and zero in on his targets. Nephthan, meanwhile, taking the spearhead of the operation, going to be going in first, flash and targeting through the smoke, but they line up and it's a bottleneck massacre. Phelps and Vinny dip in and pluck out three lives. You need Slacks to deliver in this round. Wreck doing as much as he can as he causes carnage towards Dark. But Slacks, he's been hit hard. Seven HP on the orb. 
50 seconds on the clock as well. Red got himself in, but the bomb's back towards Jail, and you're still vastly outnumbered. Slax also knows that his position was compromised, so he wants to walk back, clear, and see if there's a player wrapping on them through middle. They still have the flashbang in the hands of Henny as well, who can toss that in. If the call comes through, they still have eyes on the bomb. This is a very difficult situation to see how M80 get anything done. And I think the fact that Slax is already backing off the T-spawn has given us the read of what's coming up. It's going to be a save. It will be a sixth round to the Brazilians. And although M80 got a bit of consistency, it's only two rounds back to back. And that may not be good enough, Jackie. They yeah, need a whole lot more. It's that T-side especially. You've got to set the pace of the game. Find an opportunity to feed the hot hand. Few players living the high life at the minute for M80. Rex had some nice clutch play to him. Been good in the late round positions. def has been good to open up middle as well. You need the five fingers on one hand going up against Imperial. As right now, it seems like anyone can pick up the baton and close down a round even with a disadvantage. They saw Henny on your screen briefly there. It's been a long time since he was at his peak of Counter-Strike back at Krakow. Another PGL major, of course. How things have changed since then. Still quit with the AWP, of course, but he's not really been required too much in this game. Five and two, hasn't seen that much action. But he is a, a real talent as well, by the way. Still a threat with the AWP. Still can be a nuisance. Well-placed Molotovs, forcing back the T aggression on mid. Oh, they could be running right into the hands of Phelps as well. He walked out through the dark smoke. He's gotten so close. He could just play on the off angle behind a pillar. They're now focusing on the other man inside a dark. You're going to overextend, get some free pickup, even damage onto the second. No way can just retreat back to the site now. Little control not available, but I don't think it's going to be exploited regardless, as it's going to be canals getting pushed into via dark. And he needs to tread lightly, could get caught here. Molotov and Smoke, though, is going to give it up from M80, just trying to make sure no one is in the close angles of the dark spot. And they back away, and Henny decides he wants to get aggressive. He's actually pushing towards the T's, and this may catch them off guard. Pre-scope for so long, there's no audio cue. It's the timing on it, though. The opportunity to strike expires. DCT towards middle, adjusts the crosshair in the nick of time, finds the headshot onto Swisher. And now with a very limited amount of time on the clock, you've got a bombard out towards a Vinny lines them up, and Wreck unfortunately takes down Malbs in the carnage. Imperial with seven. Vinny with the mischief, weakening up the first player, so there's a TK on top of it. Robbing him of a double, but he will not care one bit. M80 with the timeout find themselves up against it. And this is where you're looking at Depth, who's had such a, a lot of fingers in multiple facets of this team. As you mentioned, coach into IGLing. So they're gonna be looking on him to come up with some masterful course corrections here. But even that, I mean, their economy kind of sucks as well. I just realized, you know, on T side, you've lost a bunch of rounds, he's 7-3 behind. You can't even muster up like a full on purchase here, realistically. Galil's. Oh, that's rough. Yeah, just bits and bobs, whatever they could physically find down the back of the sofa at this point going into the next round. You feel for Slax as well. He's been very unfortunate for the positions he's found himself in, where it feels like you're always getting first picked. You imagine you're going to be getting so frustrated, right, when you, you know you can be the difference maker with the orb, but it's just not hitting. Look, there's a bit of a back and forth there between Slax and Def during the timeout as well, trying to figure out where we can activate him. And now, oh, on the crossover. Rec thought he had beat the timing, but he's been turned into a pulp. Worst possible start after a timeout, after getting together a bye. And yeah, Slack 0-8, I mean, it's, it's never ideal, but that's the nature of Anubis T-side orping, man. Like, it reminds me a little bit of Inferno sometimes, where yeah. the opportunities are few or far between, and you really have to capitalize. And Imperial are playing a style that really doesn't benefit the AWP at all. Out they come. Depth deals with the first and decent T doesn't have any reason to go in for that peak. He has Henny watching the cross. It is more impact though from the man himself, and that's been a consistent factor, man. He's got a lot of kills through this mid portion of the map. He's been really good at finding those opening picks. Even multiple times bleeding up close towards Temple, and then it's been an issue where someone is able to cut him off for the rotation. This time, 
he stays alive. It's a 4v4. They've gone back for the late execute on towards the B site. Smoke comes over. No way he's going to be coming this across. Has to play to survive here. Delay, really, by time for his team. One frag's good. If he can get two, he's basically guaranteeing it now. Cavalry's going to run on over. Spray doesn't quite connect. Trade for the broken smoke, though, and it's down to Slacks. No way went above and beyond there, man. Two kills and a ton of damage on the third player. What a shot from Slacks. As we were mentioning, this guy is a beast with the orc, but he gets a chance and a chance he has to carve a path back into this round. It's a battle of the orpers. Three kills in this with 13 seconds, though. Oh, and he has to cross to get the bomb. Oh, how brutal is this? Slax is going to be feeling it. Adrenaline surging through his veins, but he's going to have to tap out and save. That is a bitter pill to swallow if you're Slax after landing some super swift flicks. It's so rough as well. It's a gamble, right? Because you know you don't have the time to clear both. So you're thinking he's either going to be deep CT or temple. Got to fight one of them. Hope I hit the shot. It's the only win condition. Doesn't work. At least for individual, though, it's going to get you back into things a little bit. It's rough. You know, 11 rounds of the game where it feels that you haven't really been able to play CS at this point. You're kind of just going down in the first few frags. There was that conversation during the timeout comes straight back in. We know he can deliver with the orb, so it's good to at least see him coming alive. You keep it in play as well. But like you say, it's got to be an entry tool. You kind of time to find a pick with it expires quite quickly onto Anubis. This time he goes running in for the contact on A, uh, but Vinny switches it up. Yeah, uh, so do Imperial. They send two players out on A main this time, as opposed to the one, and they get the hit and run they were looking for. Imperial, they're not just winning the duels, man. They're winning this game of chess. They are out positioning and out maneuvering M80 at every turn. Always applying pressure. If Def wants to try and create space towards middle, we'll give you more mid control. We'll play towards the extremities and set up for that. Vinny, full confidence as well, playing anti-flash with the smoke to support. You can turn into the wall. Don't get caught with your pants around your ankles, though. Walk in, still wins the duel. Death trades. But you look at the numbers game. Vastly outnumbered two to one with time ticking, and they know where you're coming from. Phelps playing anti-flash. Will get one. That's good enough. Decent team now can just hide on the back of the site. Going for that peak timing. A lot of damage to Swish on three. He'll stand and deliver for one, but he's going to get caught on the... Retreat outside of A main. Oh, I thought for a second he flipped across to the headshot there, but didn't end up happening. And it's Phelps and Vinny that stand at the top of the board. A ton of frags between the two of them. Smiles on the faces. And why the hell not, Jackie? They're only a few rounds away from securing the 2-0. Oh, yeah. They're living it right now. Living their movie in the way they're playing this one. Malbs has got an interesting tactic for the dual hand warmer. The akimbo hand warmer is not something I've seen. It's quite nice. I'll give him that. It's good form. Is is it just me? Like I I feel like I've never had cold hands in my life. My hands are always life. too sweaty, so yeah. I'm gonna be honest, they just get too hot. Right. That, whenever I see someone using those, I've, I've used them a couple of times just out of curiosity. I'm like, mate, I feel like my hands are melting. Like, I can't handle it. I don't know what it is. I, I feel like I just run very warm. Hot temperature kills me. Same. I just can't can't handle it, mate. Same, dude. Same, 100%. It's good, though, because when we cast it, we can crank the AC up. Exactly. We you sit know. here in a little icebox. Love it. Living our dream. Everyone's wearing coats. We're there in a sweatshirt. <laughs> 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 right there. Second half goes live. A much needed pistol. That's the top and bottom of it. Those are the facts for M80. You've got to come out swinging. You won the opening pistol. It was a clutch round if you missed it. But now on the CT side, really got to put the foot down here, start to get some momentum back, and it's mid control for Imperial. Certainly is. They're just rushing straight up mid round the back, showing no respect whatsoever. And Phelps is already in Temple. Rex, like, hold up a minute. I thought this was the CT side we're playing on. And suddenly they've been forced back, and his T's just splatter outside of Temple, dealing fatal damage, and already secured a bomb plant. You've got a backstab as well. Everything's just lined up for Imperial to clothesline this one. It's all down to death with a P2K. Slays onto the first as Henny gets behenned. Ooh, flash around the corner. A little bit of a bait. It's just the smoke triple peak to secure it. And that one goes the way of Imperial. Oh, and with it, potentially the entire map cap sizes on the side of M80. You assume they're probably going to go in for a force here. Some pistols, maybe a, a scout in play if, if Slax is feeling it. But yeah, I mean, that was a really nice tactic from Imperial. Just the run and gun 
kind of aggression. I suppose it's kind of reminiscent of the all around the world tactic from overpass on the T side. Like, we're gonna go mid down connector through onto B side. Here it's mid through temple onto the B side. And there's nothing that MA could do about it. They do have to scout and play with some pistols, but. Oh, it's looking dicey. It's a bit of a gamble. There's at least an initial tag there. A bit of damage onto Henny. Softening him up if he walks into the scout could be a different story. Slacks had a read on the expected peak from Phelps. Bomb looking to cross as well. You can hold this back, force him to go for the longer wrap round through carpets or through the wall. So that one not really softening Phelps up enough to be converted by a pistol. It's one of the other advantages to playing the Galil. The extra five bullets allows you to just tap a lot more frequently on situations like that. And it just softened up, slacks down to 10 HP. You cannot afford to re-peak again. This puts mobs into quite the difficult spot, but he does have slacks coming in as well as a bit of backup. Molly's raining onto the site. What a shot that is from Mob. Surgical precision. Oh, and a second one as well. Mob is continuing to turn the knife to Scalpel, but no way is going to come good eventually. And Depth has been sent packing from the backside. So much damage has been inflicted across to Imperial. You slowed them down. You've done a lot of damage, but you've just got to convert off the back of these tags. They're going to be paranoid about the repeat from Depth towards the back line. Swisher's Monotar burns Vinny out of commission. Swisher. He's got a pistol in his hands. Death just trying to toy with them. No way gets things, but now you've got to shut it down with the Deagle. Flash round the corner, time ticking in the back of your mind, sticks to the blaze, strikes on the first. Henny playing so far, but he's going to be smoked off. You've got a bit of room to breathe on this one now. Jumps on a bomb to bait him. Will he believe it's a full commit? He doesn't. Oh, Swisher with the right call, but not enough time. And Henny did not bite down on that full defuse for one second. I suppose that's another situation where when you have such a vast lead like this, Jackie, you can afford to take that luxury. If the roles were reversed here, you'd be a lot more desperate on that peak. Yeah, you really would be. They knew they had a buffer. They knew they could play a bit safer. If you lose one round, it's okay. You can still get back into the game. God damn. I'm glad we found out what the medical doctorate was for mouths, though. It's in Deagleology, Vince. <laughs> Deagleology. Indeed it was. Unfortunately, though, it was a two and done. And it's unreasonable to say, like, mobs needed more kills to, to take the round. It was still super close. But that's the game that they've been playing here. Like, Imperial have been so ruthless. Like, you knock one of them down, there's another three Brazilians there to just pick the flag back up again and run forward straight to your face. And it's those two of Vinny and Phelps, as ever, breathing down the necks of M80. Slacks has been wrecked again, and they're already spilling out to the site. It's too easy, no way. Just walks it through onto jail, gets one, and traded back out again in Swisher. Tried his best on the flank around the back of jail. Sets it up for death to potentially do damage, but the problem is they're so far away. It's an MP9. If you're up close, it'll wreck you, but from this distance, the Galil's going to be favored every damn day, and Decency's just holding for it. Wants to isolate him. Hot flash over the top, but he peeks in and falls down. Slacks again in a situation where he has to clutch this to starve off match point, but it's a scout this time, not the orb. I think it was too prone there. Depth was trying to see if one of the players was anti-flashing and get a sneaky peek, but also he was alleviating the pressure for Slacks to cross the smoke and not get wall banked. The downside is because he's died and there's so much time left, it's like, yeah, Slacks, you've got B control, mate, congrats. It's going to be an A plan anyway. So your job's half, not even half done. It's only just beginning. They can clear Temple here, have a little bit of a look towards the lip, walk their way down through camera. They've got time to clear out the site as well. Spot Heaven, make sure Fish Child's clear, then hard commit on the plant. His window of opportunity to strike from A-Main is there, but it's going to tick away. It just depends if Henny gets around the corner quickly enough, walks into the scope, and now it's a one versus one. He has a Molotov as well here, Jackie. And that's going to be to the back of the site. This is winnable now. It forces out the team, but he misses his shots. Oh, oh. he gets punished. That was his chance, he played it perfectly, but stumbled on the final hurdle. Well, that stings. That really does sting. You could see it with the body language as well, man. Trying to shake it off, get himself back in the game, keep it going. That's such an unfortunate clutch. 
for Imperial though, they're going to be taking these to the bank every damn day. Uh, another one they walk away with in the dying moments of the round that just keeps putting more pressure on it. And now you're sat there knowing, all right, we've got what nine rounds to work with here before we even really have to worry. Let's just close this one down, boys. Get another win under the belt. Yeah, and they find themselves up against a real rough purchase as well. Like, HG's going to do quite a bit of damage on P9 behind it. As Phelps gets winged, but no way, just keeps the pressure applied and shuts it down with two. And that should be the curtain beginning to come down. Slacks can maybe give them a little bit of staying power into this round, but he's now been molotoved out of position. It's looking like it's the beginning of the end. Stuck for at least another two seconds before the molly fades. His teammates gobbling up towards CT. Maubs with a deagle in his hands. He's been impactful with it. But in this one, you're so vastly outnumbered that it's just a matter of seconds until it should be an Imperial win. The retake has to be flawless, and they're falling. They go down to the task. 13 to 3, Imperial take it cleanly. That is an excellent performance on the side of Imperial against an M80 squad that was made to look ordinary, but we know that they're a solid unit. We know they're a solid outfit. They're just comprehensively outplayed and beaten. Yeah, Imperial really did just come into that one playing lights out, right? Any opportunity they had, they looked like they were just dealing with it.